Hi everyone, Dr. Jeff here with you again this week with Cove Stood Mia and uh, Mia, we've had a bunch of requests for different things and I'm going to talk about one of those today. So what are we talking about today? Tonight we're going to be talking about knee osteoarthritis. So in the knee, you have something called cartilage. Cartilage is a glass-like structure that is going to be at the end of the bones in the knee and in the joint. Cartilage is really important because it helps protect the bones in the joint from compressive forces, which we're exposed to every day, as well as helps lubricate the joint to help with easy motion. The thing is, over time, for some reason, this cartilage can start to break down, introducing pockets into the cartilage, which causes the bone to be exposed. The problem with this is that bone has pain receptors, but cartilage doesn't, so this can cause the pain with, that people have with osteoarthritis of the knee. So in your knee, you've got three compartments. You've got the medial compartment, the lateral compartment, and you've got another one here under the patella called the patella femoral uh, compartment. They all are lined with cartilage. Um, and what can happen is, is through, through overuse or overstress and things like that, uh, the cartilage can start to wear away. And one thing can happen is, you know, if you fall as a kid or you twist your knee or you sprain it playing sports or whatever with your knee, uh, that can cause, can cause an inflammatory reaction. When you get an inflammatory reaction, that inflammation is very toxic to cartilage, kind of eats away at it. Um, so uh, when, you, when you do this, you want to get a treated property, it can start to break down the cartilage and, and, and you get early osteoarthritis in your knee. Um, another thing that happen is just the mechanical issues. Um, so uh, what can happen is that, um, let's say you're riding a bike and your bike seat's not the right height or you've got your toe turned in or your toe turned out, um, or you're running and your mechanics are not very good with your running. Uh, you, you run too much in the inside or the outside, you're putting too much stress on certain parts of your knee uh, and those parts of the knee can break down faster uh, because of the force of being applied to certain parts of your knee. Other people are just born with thin cartilage. Uh, they just don't have as much cartilage as other people. It could be genetic, it could just be something out of the blue um, when they're in their womb, but for some reason the cartilage doesn't form properly uh, and they're going to get early signs of arthritis even though they really didn't do much to their knee. Yeah, there's a couple key symptoms that people with osteoarthritis of the knee experience. The first one being reduced range of motion. So you might find it harder to get that extra range. Um, there's also pain with movement of the joint. Additionally, things like swelling, um, as well as can be red or hot to the touch or warm to the touch. Um, additionally, you might be more stiff in the morning, but overall at night it's going to be more painful as you get moving in the morning and get you know that motion back. That's when it starts to feel a bit better. But near the end of the day, when that joint has been under those constant forces and stress, that's when it's going to be a bit more painful. So as far as uh, how we diagnose this, generally when you come in, you complain about your knee pain. And through the history and, and talking about your knee, we can kind of get a pretty good idea that it's probably your arthritis, just the way it's acting. Um, but we'll do some orthopedic testing, try to rule out meniscal tears, you know, sprains and strains, other things that could be going on with the knee. Uh, if we still think it might be arthritis, we're not quite sure, uh, we can send you for an x-ray. Um, one, one of the issues I have with taking an x-ray, I've seen people with lots of arthritis in their knee and they have very little pain, and other people have very little arthritis in the knee, they have lots of pain. So taking a picture and saying you have arthritis is not necessarily going to tell us that arthritis is causing uh, your knee pain. You really have to, to, to uh, coordinate that with your, uh, your examination and your history uh, of it. Um, if it gets really bad, um, your doctor may refer you for an MRI. This is usually done when well, we can see the cartilage better on MRI than we can on an x-ray. Uh, but this is kind of leading up to possible either injections or, or, or new joints. As far as treatment is concerned for your knee, um, one thing we want to do is we want to keep your knee, your, your knee muscles healthy. So working on your quads, your hamstrings, your calves, keep your knee strong because uh, that can help the cartilage take these, uh, these forces off the cartilage uh, and your knee. There's been some research out there on something called glucosamine sulfate. Uh, it was a, a product years ago. They found that it can actually help um, with regenerating cartilage in your knee. They have found that you can actually regrow the cartilage in your knee through motion and through proper nutrition. Uh, so glucosamine sulfate has been used for that. We have something now here called Caprex, which is made of hops, which is something very similar to glucosamine sulfate. The problem with glucosamine sulfate was that it actually would raise your blood pressure uh, and actually loosen your stools. Um, so the next generation is, is, is called Caprex. Your family doctor may give you something called a nostril anti-inflammatory. It's not something like a Celebrex or a, 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 a naproxen, something like that. Again, that helps reduce that inflammation in the knee. 
Uh, you can also go on uh, an anti-inflammatory diet. Uh, so again, try and reduce the inflammation in the knee because that's very toxic to the cartilage. So this is getting rid of, generally getting rid of your white, so white bread, white flour, white sugar, white rice, uh, things like that to try and decrease the inflammation in your body. That's going to help your knee out as well. Um, as far as what we can do here for you, uh, generally laser and ultrasound and IFC, all the usual things we do for tendonitis is things like that to try and keep the swelling uh, at bay on your knee. Um, there's also um, a, uh, injections you can do. So we talked a little bit about the uh, hyaluronic acid injection or Synvisc, uh, PRP injections, stem cell injections, again, to help to, to regenerate some of the cartilage in your knee to try and provide more cushioning in the knee at all. Um, you can also get decompressive braces, especially with the medial compartment or the lateral compartment. You can actually get special braces now to kind of separate it, take the pressure off um, so the bone is not touching on the bone as much anymore. And eventually, if all else fails, you get a new knee. Knee replacement. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hopefully it doesn't get to that point. But that's all we have for you guys here today. Like always, if you have something that you want us to talk about, leave it in the comments below. And follow us on Instagram at Gold Jersey Wellness for more health-related content. And like always, here at Gold Jersey Wellness, we, we got, got you back. back.